Bienvenidos, señores y señores, and welcome to another edition of the Soccer Sanchez podcast. And we're back. It's been a long break. As is, as inconsistent as this channel is, we'll always come back at some point to give you the uh, the news and the and the talks of the uh, football world. Um, with me, as always, the man who's been here since the beginning, Stu gets goals eighty eight. How are you? Happy New Year. Bonjour, como tal, all too. <laughs> yeah, feliz año nuevo, um, Brian. And yeah, good to be here. Good to be back and able to you know go through the key key points of the season so far and talk about my beloved Brentford that he's finally made it to the top flight. Well, this is what's uh, kind of motivated me to kind of bring this back. Obviously, new year, new 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 things to do. Twenty twenty one didn't feature any soccer Sanchez videos whatsoever. And, uh, you know, we couldn't go out We couldn't go out this season by not doing an episode. And obviously, with Brentford reaching the pinnacle heights of the Premier League, um, which is great to see. Um, obviously, I wanted to catch your insight on the season so far and what you expect from the rest of the season. But um, 2021 is a big year for football. Uh, obviously, the World Cup coming up in December. AFCON currently playing at the moment. Um, and COVID is still with us. Thankfully, the fans are back into the stadium. So... Uh, watching a game of football is a bit easier to digest than what it was when the stadiums were empty. Um, but no, it's great to see. And obviously, just in time for Brentford's uh, um, Premier League season, debut season, and hopefully seasons to come. Uh, but yeah, I mean, let's just get to it, man. Brentford, I mean, fantastic. You've been so close to making uh, making that top division. And finally, after how many years was it? How many years since the last time you were in the top division? Uh, 70 years. 70 years. Um, yeah, you're back there and and started off with a great win against Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, d- definitely. Um, yeah, I was at the game. Uh, just great scenes when Sergio Cano scored that goal. Um, he's now got, I think, two or three for the season so far. Uh, but yeah, it's a fantastic performance. Everyone was solid. You know, Anderson was bouncing and... Uh, yeah, we we humbled Arsenal at our ground, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just a fantastic occasion, and you know, great great community feel to the ground, and obviously we've now left Griffin Park, so it's a shame that Griffin Park didn't taste that Premiership football, uh, but now we've got a new new home that we're trying to make our kind of fortress and replicate that kind of like Brentford feel to it, um, which I think we've kind of gone gone quite a quite a long way to doing that, and it seems to be kind of you know most people's favourite ground in the Premier League so far, especially. Gary Neville's favourite ground. You've seen him on Sky Sports, you know, having uh, fun with the fans, same as George Jamie Carragher. So it's good that that, that kind of that kind of feeling of uh, of fun and kind of happiness and warmth is is um, obvious on on the screens. It is a it is a shame actually thinking about it that that Griffin Park never featured in the Premier League because I remember you, you guys lost to Fulham, right? Uh, where you could have got promoted. Yeah. Griffin Park would have been used that season or not? No, you moved into the new one already, didn't you? By that point. Yeah, we would have moved. So yeah, we had so that so twenty twenty one, twenty twenty, twenty one, twenty one season. We yeah, we played it at the new stadium. Obviously, um, no no fans. Um, but the previous playoff uh, run we had in the championship was the one, the first one where we get we got promoted to the championship from League One, uh, where we lost in the playoffs to uh, to Borough. So we could have tasted Premier League um, had we gone through that uh, that playoff that season. Uh, but obviously, yeah, we were just newbies at, at the time in twenty I think twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen season. Uh, so, but yeah, I think even then it would have been quite a challenge to kind of host um, our Premier League games at Griffin Park, based on the, you know our capacity and the lack of facilities there are for media. Uh, but I think we would have we would have had to come, kind of come to an arrangement with Fulham or QPR to let them um, host would, our games there. Would you not have been able to play in Griffin Park then? Was that a definite? It wasn't a definite, but they were they were kind of looking for the options to how how to you know temporarily accommodate the the media and you know the other kind of Rasmus it comes with, with the Premier League presence. So that there was an option, but they're also looking at options to kind of where else we could look at hosting our games if the Griffin, Griffin Park option wasn't wasn't viable. And yeah, Craven Cottage and Loftus Road were, were touted as potential options. But uh, yeah, obviously we don't we don't get on with our with our noisy well not even noisy they're just full of fans, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so, our noisy our noisy West Londoners uh, QPR who. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure who the Hounslow massive are, uh, uh, you know, anti anti Fulham, anti Chelsea. Who, who are the biggest rivals then for Brentford? I think it's uh, it's been Fulham because we we were traditionally you know League One and Fulham was always kind of a League Two and League One until uh, Mohamed Al Fayed came in and bought them and saved them from a uh, from their penitence in in League. Back then it was yeah, was it Division Three or Division yeah Division Three? It was back in the late nineties, mid nineties. So 
and Al Fayed came in with the money. So it's always been full of our traditional like rivals. But okay. I think these days it's probably more. Yeah, it's probably more. Maybe it's, we're trying to aspire to bigger things now. And we're Man City, Chelsea. Liverpool. Which one is it now then? Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I think Tottenham. It's, it's, gonna, it's probably Leeds because we we took a, we took their captain Pontus Janssen, and they seem to kind of like you know have some sort of resentment towards us. And same as Swansea, but Swansea, yeah, they're they're just they're in the Championship and they're always kind of like you know feisty when it comes to Brentford Swansea. And it's always it's always a quite interesting affair when we play Swansea in the Championship. But obviously we we were better last season in the playoff final and you know kind of uh, comfortably uh, got through um, that final in May last year. Fair enough. Yeah, that's yeah true. Um, I mean, it's been a decent season so far. Obviously, Brentford would have liked to have done a bit better. You're 10 points clear from relegation at the moment. Um, but performances yeah. haven't been so good, possibly, what, for what's from October time, maybe, November? Um, yeah. Not not doing as well as as, he, as, he, as people are praising you for at the start of the season. Obviously, good performances yeah. don't get you three points, but uh, you were looking good. So what, what's, what's happened, do you think? Why, why have Brentford kind of fallen off from from kind of the, the start, the first few games of the, of the year? So I think it's two, there's two reasons for that. So I think one of them is that Teams kind of they know, they know what to expect from Brentford. That physicality, um, that you know set pieces where we were looking you know superior to our to our opponents. Definitely the Liverpool Chelsea game, an Arsenal game. You can see we scored like key goals uh, via set pieces, by long throws or corners. Um, so they they might have probably sussed us out. And second of all, we've had injuries. I mean, everyone complains about injuries, but I think we had injuries in really key positions. One of them is uh, Raya, our goalkeeper who, for me, is probably one of the... I'm going to yeah, obviously say that he's really good, but I think he's one of the best keepers in the league. Um, and it's not necessarily a shot-stopping, but I think his presence when it comes to crosses, corners, he's always there and he always, he's always you know very commanding in his box. Um, and we really, I think, missed his, missed his presence in goal. And we signed Alvaro Fernandez from Wesco on loan um, in, in, during August. And he's been very uninspiring so far, very underwhelming. Um, and yeah, he's, he's he's got very little presence in the box. And when he when he see a corner coming in, you can almost sense he's shitting his pants because <laughs> he just doesn't he just doesn't come out. He just stays on his line. And if he does come out, he kind of makes a shambles of it. But more more often than not, he kind of stays on his line. And the goals against uh, the goal Southampton scored against us, the first one, he was pretty much just on his line. And he could have you know I would have kind of when I when I see the goals coming in, I kind of compare them with what Raya could have done. And I can easily see Raya kind of punching the punching it away or. Or at least you know being being communicating with his defence. So I'm not sure if it's a language barrier or or he's just not used to that kind of Premier League physicality. Um, and also we've had the likes of Christopher Ayer, who was really impressive at the beginning of the season. Um, he's been injured for three months. Uh, Rico Henry was injured for a few games too. Um, and yeah, the other one was Sergio Canos. I mean, obviously he scored the goal, uh, the first goal of you know the first our first Premier League Premier League goal against Arsenal. And what a goal it was, but he just isn't a right back. Um, he he's, he's he struggles very much. He was very he was he was getting better in the championship last season, but it's always I think one of his one of the main frustrations behind Sergi Kamis is his lack of uh, his delivery is really poor. He, he looked soccer. he looked really good in the championship. I mean, he looked like a player, and then the season is just especially recently, the last three, four, five games, he seems to be just kind of losing it a little bit. Yeah, but even the championship was always frustrating. You know, seeing him play because he sometimes give the ball away really cheaply. Um, and but yeah, he, he did get better because he had a, a, a great, he had a season a season where he didn't play because he had a he, he, he messed up his crucial his, his crucial ligaments. Um, but yeah, he's not a right back, and he yeah he just when he bumps forward, he kind of you can sense he's kind of tired by the time he gets to crossing the ball or trying to make those runs, and he kind of runs out of steam as he gets close to the close to the penalty box. Uh, so yeah, he's not he's not a natural right back. And the one game that I've, that I've seen that he's played this season where he was really good was against Leeds away, where he scored the goal and he was, I think he also set up Mbuma, uh, your favourite player. Um, so yeah, I think he's, he's wasted pretty much a right back, and he should be one of the options to come up to come off the bench to uh, to make an impact. And an impact up up front. Uh, so that's that's one of the reasons I think we struggled very much at right back. Uh, we've got Mad Rustler, who's an academy product, product, and he's he was really good. He was pretty pretty pivotal to our win to our recent win against Aston Villa. Uh, just over a week ago, uh, so yeah, there's those kind of reasons why I think we kind of slipped off the radar a bit and we're kind of living off past wins of the season. Uh, but we've got David Ryder coming back in a couple of weeks. Also, critically, 
Josh De Silva, who was he was fantastic in the championship before he got injured. Yeah. Uh, he's finally making his comeback um, in the next few weeks. Oh wow! And I think it'll be pivotal to how he plays. He's going to be like a new new signing for us. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think we've lacked a lot of that creative edge um, in the in the box and and getting the ball to Tony and Bruma. You can sometimes see him, Tony, you know, cutting a frustrated figure. Um, and I think again, Tony, he's great at holding the, holding the ball and. And you know, kind of, you know, with the presence, you know, I think he's got the most amount of headers in the league, and uh, that's crazy. Um, he's been he's been great when it comes to you know, proofing the ball up front, which isn't my preferred style of play. Obviously, it's very kind of reminiscent mm-hmm. listen to Stoke the Stoke days. Uh, yeah, we have got we've got the same 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 uh, uniform, same uh, same uh, colours, but mm. uh, yeah, <laughs> I think we we'd be more renowned for our passing football than our kind of like tiki tack esque approach uh, in the championship. But we have to sacrifice that with. We're playing more Route One direct uh, type of football, which I don't think suits Tony's abilities. Um, you don't think so? Because I, I, I see him as a very good holding man. He tends to flick on the ball quite a bit and, and hold the ball up from from long balls. And but he's not going to score like he's not going to score like that. No, uh, no, true. Yeah. But the, but the, this is with the intention of, of of attackers running, you know, you know, overlapping him and, and making space. So assuming uh, that yeah. assuming that's the, what you're saying that that's not the tactic that Brentford normally um, uh, yeah. use. Yeah, it's not. I mean, we've throughout, throughout the last few years, we've kind of like praised for our kind of very um, flamboyant style in the championship. You know, passing, passing and moving. And this season has been very. I mean, I don't think we have the players for that this season. That's why we've had to go route one. Uh, it's worked for the first few games, but it's just not. It's as we've actually been working for a couple of months now. Um, but I really do. I do. I really. I really do like uh, Johan Visa. Uh, he's he's been really good. When you see him carrying the ball forward, he just looks like the kind of player that's going to beat his man. Um, and he's very comfortable dribbling, dribbling with the ball, um, and it's something that we haven't done enough this season. And I think having Visa on the team um, really gives us a kind of different kind of our style of play. Uh, so I'd like to see Visa playing a bit more than in Boomer because I think he's he's been again, you know, very underwhelming too. And yeah, he's, he's always you kind of you know you always expect to kind of lose the ball when he's kind of dribbling because he just hasn't got that. Who who? Yeah, uh, Brian and Boomer. Well, I was going to get on to him because <laughs> now. I remember when he when he, his first season at Brentford, I think he scored like 16, 17 goals. He had a great first debut season with Brentford. I think he fell off a little bit last year. He might have been injured, I can't remember. Um, yeah, he, well, he caught COVID, but I mean, they always say that, you know, long COVID might be an issue, but yeah, I mean, he, he, missed, he missed a few sitters in, in the Championship, but you just thought, yeah, that can't, you can't really blame that on COVID. Yeah, well, this is the thing, and I watched them sitters, and I thought, you know what, just given the benefit of the doubt, maybe his foot's got COVID, COVID who knows? But then, he's coming to the, cha- uh, to the Premier League, and I think I keep saying to you, it just feels like the only time you see a close-up of Mbumo is with his head in his hand saying, oh, <laughs> that was close. Whether it be a pass or a cross or a yeah, shot. Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he's very good up until the, uh, the the decisive moment, whether it be, like I said, crossing or shooting. He's, you can tell he's got yeah. skill. He's still young, to be fair. Um, but do you think he's kind of hindering your attacking play at the moment? Because the way I see it is he gets in the right places but he just can't finish the ball. Like he's just, he's just not there he yet. He can't really get past his man convincingly. Like Visa, Visa for me, he can, you know, he's got the tricks up his sleeve that that gets him past his, past his man. Whereas Abuba hasn't got that. He has to rely on players coming bombing forward to, to, you know, pass off and then try and move into some space. Um, but yeah, he's been. I think he. I've seen on social media like the comments that usually made is like, oh, how many, how many times is he going to hit the post this this game? Because uh, he's at the post. He's like, lucky. Eight or nine. If he's lucky, yeah, if he's lucky. But I mean, how how much can you blame luck when it comes to hitting the post? I mean, he's hit it nine times this season, I think, something like that. Um, so yeah, for me, it's yeah. I, don't, I just don't I don't know if he's good enough. I mean, that first season, you're right. He he was like one of our best players, but you have to kind of you have to, you have to kind of consider the fact that we had Saeed Rama, uh, Oli Watkins, who pretty much were you know they they were the best forwards in the league. So how much of that you have to factor in? Because obviously, when you have really good strikers to feed off of. That's going to improve your. That's going to improve how many chances you have in the game. Um, and obviously, when 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 Watkins left, when 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 Ben Rama left, I mean, and was by himself, relying on on Tony. And maybe that that Tony and Boomer makes even even in the championship we kind of struggled. We struggled to see how how it would work. Um, and that's kind of kind of fed back into the Premier League. I mean, he's not. I don't I don't want to be too harsh on him. He has done well in some games, but I just don't think he suits kind of what we what we want to do. Um, which is why I prefer playing, you know, Visa up front. And I get like the game where Bubo did play well was against Leeds with Canos. That was that was the only game I've seen them two play really well. 
this season where I've seen them being, you know, kind of really kind of dangerous up front. Um, so, yeah, I think, again, Kansas is, is being wasted at right back. You know, he's kind of making an impact sub and get a proper right back in, in that position. And we've been linked with, with a few players this season, but which is, again, we've been very frustrating in the transfer market. We haven't really done done anything. We've kind of just signed B team players, our academy players, to, to progress, but not ready for the first team, um, which is really frustrating. And now we're like, we're halfway to January. There's not much time left, and I don't see us making too many signings. I think Thomas Frank said that we were looking to get a right back and maybe a striker in to compete with Tony. Um, but do, do, you think that, not. do you think that's plausible? you think that's something you can do in January? Yeah, I think there is. I think that is, but I think we're very, we're very, um, we're very, we're a bit too stingy. I think we're a bit stingy when it comes to, to bidding for players. And again, we, we're known for being, aside from being, you know, very progressive uh, in the football, the footballing aspect when it comes to you know passing and moving, um, we've been very progressive off the pitch in developing our players and and our finances. And even though our owners, you know, Mark Hughes, I, I think he might be a billionaire, Matty Benham, he's not been the kind of owner to kind of splash the cash, and he's been very, very prudent. Um, so yeah it's kind of behind why we don't want to necessarily bid too much for players that we don't think are worth it and again that comes with a stats approach we kind of we kind of use a stats approach to really you know to really up to, to really inform how much we want to bid for a player and if a team is asking too, for too much money we say it's not worth it so the risk reward ratio isn't there um, so yeah that's that kind of hinders us in terms of when it comes to buying a player and to be honest, you can't really argue against that because it really it's worked for us in the last few years. Well, this is what this, this is one of the big things that, that Brentford as a club have been praised in the recent years is the way you've scattered your players and, and the profits you've made from buying in cheap and then selling big because they've come out so well. Um, and maybe that's what's going to hinder you this January. If, if, if the right kind of player doesn't fit your system, then they're not coming in. So it's not a question of money, then you're saying. It's, it's more of the, the scouting yeah, opportunities and who's right. available. Money-wise, I think we're, we're fine because obviously without Premier League money, we spent what thirty million for Ayer. We bought in, who else? Yeah, we bought in Alvaro Fernandes on loan. Um, who else? We bought Ayer. We beat Visa for like I think eight eight million. So that's twenty one million there. And we bought someone else. Who else did we buy? Oh yeah, Onyeka. I think for like five million. So yeah, we sp- I think we spent thirty million, which isn't necessarily a whole heap of money. Um, it was only for three players, so we haven't really signed too many players with that, with that money. So I think, yeah, I think we're missing a, missing a right back and definitely a striker because we have Marcus Force up in, on our bench. He's a promising striker. Uh, he's come up from the academy, but um, he's not really done too much when he's come off the bench and he looks like he struggles. And he scores goals for fun in the, in the, in the cup games. He scored, a, he scored, I think, a hat trick against Oldham early in the season. He scored again in the, in the FA Cup against Port Vale. So I think he's ready for a move to the Championship uh, on loan. I think Nottingham Forest are out, are out for him in the Championship. Um, and I, again, it like, really baffles me why we let um, Halil Dovisoglu, uh, a, Tur- a Turkish under-21 striker, leave um, in the summer to go back to Galatasaray. Um, I think it must be it must be more for like um, reasons off the pitch that he left because, yeah, during the preseason friendlies, he looked really dangerous. He looked like one of our only players that could actually take on a man and beat him, which is what you know, which is what you and Visa is offering us right now. Uh, that's what that's what I saw Dennis Ugly offering us, but he's gone on loan to Galatasaray. I think more for personal reasons. Obviously, he's a big Turkish club. He's a you know, Turkish under twenty one striker, so maybe that kind of connection was more attractive to him than playing for Brentford. Mm-hmm. Um, but my, I mean, I've said I think I think if he, if he can uh, try and recall him back back from his loan, I think it's probably a, very much a far cry because I think he's pretty much enjoying his time in Galatasaray, Galatasaray at the moment. But uh, yeah, I think we need some we need someone up front to compete with Tony and have another option there because yeah, with the last few games we kind of we've seen a struggle in regard to get to make any impact. And against Southampton he was very poor. I know even against Villa he was very poor as well. Um, so I think okay, he also caught, he also caught COVID a few weeks ago, so I'm not sure that's also having an impact on his on his um, on his on his playing at the moment. So possibly yeah, uh, yeah, possibly. I guess it's kind of wait and see. Well, listen. Um... The next three games, so Brentford will be interesting. Tomorrow you have uh, Liverpool at uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon in UK time. Uh, then the yeah. next game after that is Manchester United on the 19th of January and then mm. Wolves on the 22nd of January. Of those nine points, how many do you think you're going to come out with? Um, I mean, Wolves is a game that the easy, the easy game on paper, but the one the, game, the easier games on paper this season, we've, kind of, we've messed up the most. Uh, we've lost to Norwich. We, we, we struggled against Newcastle. We got a draw against them. We got battered by Burnley. So 
so yeah, you just go to each other on paper doesn't mean Brentford's going to do any any better than playing against the United team. But I can actually see us getting more points against you know Liverpool or United than against Wolves. Uh, so I'm probably going to go for a win. I'm going to go for a draw, a, lo- a loss tomorrow to Liverpool. Um, well, they don't, they don't have Mane like, and Salah. You never know. Yeah, exactly. Might be able to like, sneak it. Yeah, I think I think I think they'll they'll win, but I think it'll be a, a hard fought two one win because yeah they're missing Salah and and uh, Mane. Um, they're playing Firmino and um, Minamino I think um, on the wings, so that that might hinder them. And I think that hinders them against Arsenal when they struggle to beat to you know break down a ten man Arsenal team. Um, and again, Klopp again was complaining, and I think he's, he started complaining again that oh Brent's going to do the same thing against us uh, tomorrow. This is nonsense because we played them. We, we drew them. We drew to them three three at uh, at the Brentford community, state, community stadium. So yeah, we, we, we're not ones for parking the bus. I think. Uh, so yeah, against United, I can see us get, getting a point at home, um, especially after today. I mean, they seem to be. Well, they they they, they concede goals. They can score goals, but they can definitely concede goals. Yeah. So if we can keep it tight. You know, we've got Crystal Bayer back. He's really good. Our centre back. Uh, so we have him in the team. Um, and maybe get worse at right back and take Camus out. Um, I can see us, you know, potentially getting a point there. Well, you know, never know even a win. And Wolves again, we've got Wolves at home. We beat Wolves away. Um, you did, yeah. The beginning, but again, we had we had two the nil. Team. Two nil, yeah, two nil. We should have been more actually. And we had a down, we were down for ten men as well. Um, so yeah, I can see us maybe get, get you know win, a loss, and a draw. I'll take uh, four points. I'll take that. Um, but again. I think someone pointed out the fact that we've only won once a month in the league so far, and we really won once this month against Aston Villa. So I think we find it we, we might have exhausted the kind of wins. I think you're month. very fortunate that there's been really bad teams this season. Like the points, the yeah. points tally at the bottom of that league is really bad. Yeah, um, but but Burnley. yeah, exactly. Oh, Norwich, Norwich have been pretty bad as well. But yeah, I mean you're right. And Burnley, Burnley have got four games in hand to Watford, who are seventeen. Burnley, so. Burnley, yeah. Yeah, Burnley are, so you can see them getting, you know, out of those four games, at least getting a win. Um, so that could take them again back up to where Watford is. But, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying we're, we're out of it. I think we're still we're pretty much within that kind of range. Um, but you're 14th, of, nine defeats. We had nine, I think, we're, yeah, is it 10 points away from the relegation? 10 zone? points against, yeah, 10 points away from Norwich, uh, 11 from Newcastle. Yeah, I mean, our goal difference, our goal difference probably counts for a point as well because we have a good goal difference. Um, I mean, yeah. you don't really concede too many goals. Yeah, uh, I don't think. Um, but yeah, I'm still, I'm still, yeah, still nervous about the bottom three. I, mean, I know they're not, they're not be winning too many games, but all it takes is you know one team have a really good run, and that gets you know that kind of wakes up the other teams around them. So yeah, because he's going to be dropping into that relegation fight in the next few games. But you've got you know you said United, Liverpool, uh, Wolves are so, you know really, really, really hard games to play. Um, yeah, what, one player that's really impressed me this season is Shandon Baptiste. Um, he's been, you know, wrecked by injuries since he joined um, in 2018 with Tarek Fosu from um, Oxford United. Um, plenty of potential, but this season he's kind of, you know, taken to the Premier League, um, you know, really, really well. Um, he's just one of our few players that can actually get past his man, just like Johan Visa, and has a good shot at him as well. So I think I'd like to see Baptiste playing, you know, a first team regular from now on. Um, and I'm yeah really excited to see him and uh, Josh Silva when he's fit uh, playing in the first team because I think they'll they'll carry a lot of threats um, and yeah help hopefully you know create more chances. He has looked good actually. I've, I know you've mentioned him to me recently, so I've been particularly watching out for him. And he does seem someone who's like really up for it and wants to, wants to create something yeah. for the team and and cause a yeah. problem for the opposition. So that's a good shout. He's, he's got quite a good sense of gravity because he's quite short. So uh, he's not quite short. He's just not that tall. So. Um, yeah, he's, he's got a really good pivot pivot around him and uh, pivot on him, and he can you know really drive forwards. And it's very hard to pick to get the ball off him. It's good. Uh, so yeah, I like him. I like him a lot. Fair enough. Well, um, come to the end of the show, short and sweet. The Brentford special. We had to talk about Brentford, like we had to, man. Like the amount yeah, of years, yeah. the amount of years of cussing you lot off <laughs> on the podcast. So <laughs> it's good to it's good to have Brentford there and uh, and giving Spurs three points. Um, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Different um, story when you guys play. Uh, uh, at Brentford, don't worry. Yeah, no, we'll we go to the game. We'll go to the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be the difference. We'll get three points for me at the game. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, the, the three times we've gone to watch them this season, we've won. So, yeah, good signs there. Good signs. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, as always, Stuart, thank you again for joining me. Um, it's been great talking about Brentford. Really, really, really happy for you guys. 
Uh, the tickets are more expensive? Uh, slightly more. It's only £35. What? Uh, I think That's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, we, we, we've been used to 25, we've been used to 25 pound tickets last season. Well, we weren't there last season, but Bloody yeah, it was 25 pounds before that at Griffin Park. So now it's 35 pounds. I saw our conference, so our Europa Conference League uh, games are more expensive than that. Wow, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I mean, the, the most expensive one is 40 pounds. Um, but yeah, you get those kind of prices in, in the championship and I think some of the League One teams uh, yeah, I mean, I think Matthew Benham came out, our owner came out um, before the season started saying that, yeah, ticket prices are going to be frozen uh, for the fans. Um, so, yeah, I mean, cheap, definitely cheaper than Tottenham, right? Spurs is like charging. Not the most nine. expensive, forget that. Let's forget that. We got ticket, tickets from like 80, like 80, 90 pounds, like. The... You get fleeced to watch to watch uh, Nuno Espirito Santo. Oh, playing. I didn't I didn't buy any tickets when he was around, trust me. No way, my oh, friend. Yeah. I was not spending money on that guy. But anyway, that's for another show. Listen, Stuart, thank you so much for joining us and you as well for watching and listening if you reach the end of the video. Uh, hopefully soon we'll get D-Lord and uh, Le Petretti back on with us to talk Chelsea and Arsenal. Um, but yeah, 2022 Soccer Sanchez podcast is back. Let's do this. Uh, we've got a very special episode coming up soon, but we'll talk about that soon uh, once we get the logistics and uh, sort out what we're going to discuss. But yeah, you'll find out anyway. Follow us on Twitter. There's the uh, details below. S Sanchez podcast and uh, on Instagram soccer.sanchez and like, subscribe and comment in the video below to get involved in the discussion. Let us know what you think. And yeah, it's been emotional. Take care. Bye bye. Adios.